it's it, it, it's been a while since I last did a tip video, huh? So, uh, <laughs> have you ever heard about raid chat? Nah, I'm just kidding. So, one of the absolute first things that people commented to me about in the Necromancer cult build was this hand trick where I used a snowball to get a different hand animation. And I am referring, of course, to this hand, which is not a normal hand grip. This is not the same as the usual this, this grip we've got here. So, we have here a test dummy, and if I quickly pull out this character's arm, simply, and raise it like this. Now I've twisted the hand out and as, as, as always you can see all these different hand poses I have here and the most traditional one for like an open hand grip would be this one right the alternative main grip but the issue with this is that it does look a little bit too relaxed and a little bit too close and that's because this hand needs to be printable by Skycastle right now this first tip is technically a glitch okay there is no guarantee that this trick will stay in Hero Forge as they might patch this at some point however for the time being it is a very easy glitch to replicate and it does not require pro remotely so how i did this was i had this open hand and in it i placed a snowball right now this snowball if i go into posing up here and then i twist this around and as always there's a little trash can option here on the snowball in the top right i click the trash can icon the posing goes back to how it was before and then i control z the undo option and it disappears. It does not want to control Z the twist back to how it was before I trash canned it, and so the snowball simply disappears. Yet you can still see it imposing. Technically, it still exists. So how does this glitch work exactly? Well, basically, anything this this snowball here, as you can see, it has a twist option, but that's all it has, right? And yes, if I twist it again, the snowball comes back. It has a twist option, but nothing else. And anything that your character can simply hold and twist and do nothing else with. But for example, if I can put this wand in her hand, this wand again. I can only twist it, so if I twist this a little bit, I trash can the twist, I control Z after I trash can, boom, it disappears, and now, look at this, I have a little pinch here, a, pi a Hereforge pinch. Now, so here we have an interesting one. This hand pose is very different, right? But if I twist this, this weight around here, <laughs> well, that, that already looks cursed on its own, but I'm gonna trash can that. I'm gonna control Z, boom. And now look at this hand pose. I mean, what is this? Like, this looks like some really funky, like almost Spider Man esque uh, spell casting. So, again, use these. Like, these are awesome. This is one of the coolest tricks you can use. So cloaks and stretching cloaks now i remember how hyped we all were when these cloaks came out right these these this what single edge cloak and a lot of people use this but i've also noticed that a lot of people don't and i think the reason for that is because like this is kind of hard to use in practice first of all there's a lot of motion to this cloak and also it's very short it's not really what people want but a super easy way to make these better is if you go into the posing of the cloak and you bend it like this now you see it's stretched a little bit so this cloak might look short at first glance but if you keep bending in the middle row here boop 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 do you see what's happening to this cloak it is stretching out now suddenly what used to be a very very tiny cloak like if i go back and i do this again you go back do you see the difference from this to this you've almost doubled the length of the cloak and you've made it far longer and cooler looking. So this right here, very, very nice trick, very, very easy to create. And also it does not only work for this cloak. Some other new cloaks function in the same way. For example, the rugged fur cloak. I know this rugged fur cloak is already long, but believe it or not, you can actually make it longer. You see, there is a certain point here where the cloak is bending towards the side, right? So if I twist this like this, actually, I'm not going to twist it all the way up there because then it will kind of... Can you see what I'm doing to the cloak here at the bottom? Like I am making it longer. Like if I pull this here, do you see how it stretches outwards? Now, this one is a little bit harder to work with because you don't want to pull the entire cloak to the side. It's a very heavy cloak, right? So you don't want it to be flowing in the wind. However, stretching it out here at the bottom with these is a very nice way because if I pull these all in, you'll see the, cl the cloak kind of starts to ball up. Like, is this what you want or is this what you want? You know? Now, aside from the decal kit bashing, do you notice anything strange on this model? Anything particularly around this shoulder, perhaps? Yes, that's right. Every tip video needs to have a shoulder player tip. So this is the one we're doing for this video. Can you actually guess what shoulder this is? Like, does this, this to me, almost looks like it's part of the armor. And I use this again quite effectively on the Herald model for the Necromancer cult. Can you see these shoulders that are sticking out there? Like, this is not a normal shoulder, and it's not these ones on the extra models either. It is, in fact, these ones. 
the Cursed Gaze pauldrons. But how exactly does this Cthulhu shoulder turn into this shoulder spike when in fact all it looks like is this, right? And the answer to that is simply you need to scale this thing up quite tremendously and then you need to twist it upwards like this and then pull it into the body. Now you see what's happening here. And this works with a lot of shoulder pads as well. You just scale them up, you twist them into the body and then you use them as an extra decoration on top of everything else. And the result can either be a very edgy shoulder pad like these ones here, which is kind of sticking out as though it looks like it's part of the armor in a very cool way. Or even better, you can go full hog with this trick and use it as... <laughs> I mean, you can see I've done it with more than just one shoulder here. There's a spiky shoulder pad that's stuck into this one to kind of pull spikes out of the body here on this abomination model. And then there's also another shoulder with similar spikes sticking out of the arm here with the central parts of the shoulder but it's colored like skin so it blends in and of course the same cursed gaze pauldron sticking out there so yes just use the shoulders twist them into the body see what you can make of them because it's always more than you think Now, tip number four, double model is now available for everyone which means I'm going to include at least one double model trick here now, if you've had double model for a long time, this trick might not be new to you, but it's still one of the most fundamental tricks I can offer with double modeling, and that is asymmetrical legs, right? So how do we do this? Well, if we go into the main model or the extra model, it doesn't matter, you go into body and then you go into legs up here. Now, you scroll down here in the leg option and you slice off one of the legs. Now, it looks exactly the same because mo both models are wearing the same pants, so there's a missing leg here, but you can't see it. But if I now go into the same main model, and I scroll down and I change the legs to, say, this. Now, see, the extra model maintains the legs, but the main model now has different legs. So if I keep swapping this around, or alternatively, if I maintain the same legs on the main model, and I go into the extra model, and I simply remove the legs altogether, and now there's nothing here. Now, I will admit this is a very old model and I have not used this trick for a long time, but right here is an example of something you can do with this. You know, you have a plated armored leg on one side here and a lighter armor, you know, just leather on this side here. And this kind of asymmetricality can be very cool depending on the design that you're trying to create. Now, a tip that was suggested to me by someone in my Discord is, now that everybody has access to double model, you know, speaking of, you can actually have a color library without having Pro. So, because I have Pro, right, I can go into Paints, I can scroll down here, and I have all of these different custom cloth colors, custom leather colors, and yes, I have a lot of custom skin colors as well. Now, if, if you don't have Pro, it, it, it can really suck not to have this. However, because of double model, if I go Import here, and I import a model which I have intentionally saved a bunch of colors on, so now this model here, I can kind of have this in the background. Now I've intentionally made this as colorful as I can, right? I just slapped a bunch of random colors and whatever colors you might want, like let's say you don't have pro, you just put a bunch of colors on a model, you edit them however you please, and then you import that same model from character to character every time you make something new. And now you can just, you go into the extra, and then in there you can have all of these colors and including deleted ones as well like if i paint it over something here let's say i take a black and i paint over the red now the red just becomes a an unused color here so this you could you can imagine you can just scroll down here and have so many colors there and you can use them all on top of the main model you take colors from your little custom makeshift color library here you start just using them onto the main character and you effectively have a color library now it's shoddy it's not as convenient but it is a color library and it's more convenient than trying to make new colors every single time you make a model you know all right we've done two double model tips in a row so let's do a simple one what you see here is like a typical chattified character right like i've increased the height i've i've made it really muscular you know I've, I've made a typical heroic pose and body here as opposed to the default you know but even with proportions like these uh armor and things like how you want your character to look underneath is not necessarily how it will always look with armor so here's one very standard example right like i have here used what is literally this is the same proportions as before if i remove this chest piece you will see that 
that he is still a complete chad under this. Yeah, you see, even with this chess piece, it shows. But if I put this back on, point is, for a lot of these chess pieces, like a lot of these heavy chess pieces, it will make your character look less powerful or less chad, I guess, than they might actually want. So what I'm basically saying is you should never adjust your measurements based on how the character should realistically look beneath, but you should adjust them based on how the clothing interacts with your character. So right now we have this very historically accurate bulge chess piece here, and this makes sense. But would you rather look historically accurate or would you rather have like a V-shaped Game of Thrones armor, right? So if we simply pull out the build, the shoulders, to unreasonable extent to the point where the character would look very silly without the armor but because of the art we want the armor to be more like upwards angled you know v-shaped we can pull the build out a little bit further than we normally would and this applies to everything really like if we went back and we went back to default proportions on this on this build we go back to 50 we pull the bust back in now you see the character suddenly it looks very weak by comparison but we undo both of those changes boom boom we are back to the main model. Now what I'm going to show you is not a trip you can use if you're wanting to print models, but it is a very cool color trick. So if you select a sword like this, right, and you want this to look like a pretty decent sword, and I've actually suggested a few tricks around this in the past, like how you could, for example, you could paint this black. I've suggested things like you could paint this black and then you would apply like a decal to the edge of it, you know, you this white to make it look sharpened and sure this works but it doesn't exactly look clean right so what i figured out that you can do instead is simply you apply a smooth fog radiant gradient de decal here and we're gonna rotate this around so that it hits the top right here and then you can scale it as you want but i would recommend keeping the scaling low and then you zoom this out until this little edge here is right up at the top like this and now you get this very nice like fade to the sword and it adds a level of detail that it doesn't usually have and you can apply this to almost all weapons and like it just makes them look better and if you don't want it to be as jarring like if you just want it to be really subtle you can do a slightly like you can use a gray instead of a black right and now it, it doesn't show as much but like it's still noticeable de de detail how it like gets brighter towards the end and it does make it look sharper as well just to give some examples of how this looked i for example used this on the exact same sword for the general model for the crusader kingdom build i used it again on the paladin model but this time with a shining glow you know so it looks like the sword is enchanted and it gets less and less you know fiery the further down you go and of course again if you want a more subtle example i also used it here where there's a slightly more gray metal on the actual blade and then you see how it gets brighter at the end now there's a guy called chaser cat on the reddit who is i would say is probably the best at making custom beards in her forge overall now i'm not gonna go into detail how you can use 50 million horns to make a really cool beard like he does like that is next level i will go over that in another video but what i will show you is how you can how he usually starts and if you apply something really long like the wizard's beard now i've already done this trick in the past where you you go down to like this slider two and then you twist it inwards and you get like this like you get like a squared beard which you can't otherwise have but what chaser did was you just, you took this idea and you went whole hog with it. So you go up to number one here, twist it inwards. Number two, twist it inwards all the way. Oh dear, what is happening to this beard? It's going out through his neck. We go down to number three, we twist it again. We go down to number four, we twist it again. We go down to number five, we twist it again. Boom, you see what's coming out here? A new type of beard that we did not have before. Twist it again, number six. Now we can actually start stopping. And then we twist it a little bit on the seven. And now what you see here is we have this whole new custom beard, right? And it, it looks quite cool, actually. Like, despite the fact that this is just a beard who's done, like, a carousel, like, like backflip here into his face again, it actually works. Now, I actually have a, an upcoming dwarf ranger for D&D build coming up where I use this trick to great effect, including all of Chaser's extra horns. And you, you, you'll, you'll be seeing that soon. But for now, just uh, if you use this method, make sure that you credit Chaser if you post it publicly. It's a very, very nice method for better beards. And until we get face customizer with all the new beards, I think this is for sure the best that we can expect at the moment. Now here's another trip that is not relevant to printers, but what you if you look very closely at this blue material here, what do you see? I mean, aside from the sword, right? That's obvious. But if you look at the blue, you may notice some very, very slight 
differences in the color here and that is because if I go into the color here if I go into the mixer and I remove some of these alternate blues delete delete suddenly you will see this right you'll see this in the cloak on the extra model and on the skirt here and what I've essentially done here I've used the new clothing decals this the camouflage right and I have applied it to cloth and then I've just made very slight copies of the original blue color here edited just a tiny little smidge slapped it on and then edit it just a tiny little smidge again make it a little bit lighter slap it on and you'll barely notice a difference there is a difference but you'll barely notice it and what this does is it just adds a little bit of new texture a little bit of detail so even if you have even if you want something to be monocolor even if you don't want to go like full checkered tartan on everything you know you can still apply a little bit of extra detail using some of these decals and it doesn't only work with the camouflage you can do the same with the leopard print you know just just use these to add a little bit of more texture to some of your cloths this works especially well when you're making very like subtle dirty gritty molds you know like this 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 character is not meant to be covered in grit but he's definitely not clean either so you can see that this white color here underneath the text it's kind of slightly edited with slightly gri grimier white colors here and there you can notice it even more on this hanging flap here as well as up here and it's just like these little decals all over the place you might not notice them at first glance but they do make a difference Now, this video started with a glitch and it will end with a glitch. So let's say let's say you already have Pro, or you don't need Pro for this, but let's say you don't want this custom color library standing next to the character, right? Or maybe you're just done with it. So now we're going to import something different and we're going to import a pre-made glitch, right? And that is the no body glitch. We're going to import this. Boop. Now, the character was replaced with what looks like nothing, but there is actually an extra model here. So we're going to go into the extra model and then we are just going to select a cloak. Now, for this trick specifically, we are going to put on the short ragged cape. Now, you see this. Now, let's go into the main model and we apply the same one to his back. So now we have... Now we have two red cloaks there. So I'm going to move the main model into the center like this. Then I'm going to take the extra model and I'm going to twist it around and we're actually going to increase the height of the extra model a little bit see the height will affect this so if, if i really wanted yeah exactly it doesn't have to be a cloak i i, I could have an extra little skirt here or something like there, there's there's a lot of things you can do with these invisible glitches right but i'm gonna pull the height up like this pretty tall and then we are just going to twist this character the invisible character into this main model like this twist it around a little bit make sure that it fits just where it needs to fit and then of course we edit the cloak itself a little bit, like I was doing earlier on in the video. We're going to do it on the main model as well. Boom, there you go. Using an invisible model, we now have a cloak on both sides. Like, here's the thing, right? You don't have to do this really complicated stuff with double models. You don't have to layer two models and go crazy with layering. You can just import an invisible body and add a second cloak. Now, this works with, with more cloaks than just this. I mean, I could put, I mean, I could put, like, a longer cloak on like this. I could put this on and, like, like you, you have all these things. Like, this one, the, these one arm cloaks. I could take this and I could simply twist it around. And I can pull it down like this. And there you go. Now you are covering one arm of the character as well. You know, they're, they're like whatever you want to do with this, with these floating invisible models is up to you. But as, as always, the links to this model will be in the description below. So if you want to, you know, use this template, you know, import your own invisible model to make a cloak with. If you don't know how to replicate the glitch yourself, you can do that. You don't need to know how to do it. And yeah, have fun with your <laughs> extra floating cloaks. Good luck. Now links to these four dummies, the poncho trick, the chad armor, the shoulder dummy and the original dummy. All of these four will be in the description below if you want any of them otherwise they're very easy to replicate on their own uh, and as always if you like this video then please press like if you didn't like the video then by all means press dislike and if you have any tips you would like me to go over in future videos then please point them in the comments below with all that said goodbye until next time